Thank you so much for your invitation. It's my pleasure that I'm here to talk to you about uh, my presentation. It's about digital health. And I will go through the, my slide. Yes. And the main point that I want to talk is uh, digital health, mobile health, and virtual reality. Mobile health and virtual reality are the subcategories of digital health. I can uh, start from uh, digital health. Okay. <clears throat> what is digital health? And digital health is an umbrella term uh, for a wide range of technology uh, that can also meet the healthcare challenges also, this is a very useful tool and that refer to technologies uh, that uh, can deliver services to consumer and patients and help them to manage the personal health and also it uh, can help to self our patients. And, and I will explain more in the mobile health part. What are the benefits and usage of digital health? Digital health can help prevent diseases and can promote and protect health and well being, helping patients monitor and manage chronic conditions, and also improve the quality of life, reduce the cost, and also a lot of uh, benefits that I have mentioned for digital health. And, and I just uh, mentioned some of them that was very important. Digital health also will allow individuals to improve their lifestyle and also maintain this and that, okay, about the digital health that I wanted to say and that can help improve the lifestyle of individuals and also maintain good health for longer. And also it can lead to fewer visits to the physician and uh, digital health too could help shorten the length of the disease. So uh, you should have some question about uh, what's the differences between uh, digital health and also e-health. Uh, based on uh, WHO uh, that has some uh, definition for e-health and digital health, uh, I made this slide for it. E-health is broadly defined by uh, the WHO as the use of uh, as the use of information and communication technologies for health, but uh, digital health is described more broadly. Uh, as I told you, it is the umbrella term uh, for areas including e-health, telehealth, and also more. Uh, so you can see the e-health is the subcategory of digital health, and uh, digital health is uh, broader than e-health. The examples of such technologies of digital health include uh, mobile health, virtual reality, telemedicine, artificial intelligence, wearable devices, and also robotic. I will explain uh, two uh, examples of this digital health or two subcategory that is mobile health and the virtual reality because uh, these two are very important for managing the uh, patient's health and the patient diseases. Mobile health. WHO has defined the mobile health or M health as a medical and public health practice supported by mobile devices such as mobile phones, patient monitoring devices, and personal digital assistant or PDAs, and also other wireless devices. Mobile health is broadly defined as the use of mobile phone or portable digital devices in healthcare. And also mobile apps, it can be prescribed as an effective self-management tool for patients. As I told you before, the self-management for patients who have chronic diseases is very important to achieve the health and the standards of that health and not um, treatment, but we can control and prevent and to be, for example, be acuter than uh, other diseases. 
Mobile health is enabling individuals to access health care services uh, by uh, removing the um, geographical restriction uh, while increasing the coverage and the quality of health care services. And because uh, it removes geographical restriction, we can use it uh, every time and every uh, from every time and uh, from everywhere that I want. And because of this, this is easily accessible. Mobile health is the creative use of emerging mobile devices to deliver and improve healthcare practices. And so it's fun as you can start for successful behavior changes, ranging from smoking cessation and weight loss and disease management or also self-management, et cetera. Digital health, uh, I'm sorry, mobile health uh, can promote health awareness and also has a lot of benefits for the global health status. The two types, and there are two types of mobile health. One of them is mobile application and other one is other mobile devices too that I explain more. These tools have the capability to support healthcare providers and also provide real-time uh, results. About the mobile applications, and there are a lot of uh, mobile apps and that uh, aid healthcare providers. And so these range from reference apps, such as the literature databases, to more diagnostic or practical apps to support day-to-day -day practice such as uh, apps providing medical advice or uh, connecting to GPs. About references apps are used by healthcare providers to provide qu quick and evidence-based and medical information that also these apps are updated regularly because uh, these are based on evidence and it's very important to be updated. About diagnostic and uh, it, allow, uh, it allows healthcare providers to provide uh, information and gather also data from patients and that about the health and healthcare and also they formul formulate differential diagnosis and provide self-care or self-management solution. About the self-care and uh, self-management and there are uh, a bit different, has a difference between these two and self-management and provide the connection between patients or physician but self-care it doesn't need in this solution and also patients can manage their health but this for example especially applications practical apps provide a logistical support to healthcare providers. For example, pro delivery manager provides pharmacies uh, with the ability to track the deliveries and ensure that drivers are delivering medicine safely to their patients. Other mobile devices tools. Mobile devices are also play a role within mHealth also, these devices fit onto a smartphone to convert them into a diagnostic tool. For example, and there is such a device that, uh, is, that convert a smartphone camera into a, an otoscope. And also uh, other devices include wireless blood pressure monitors and also pulse, pulse oximeter. We can mention it in other mobile devices. Mobile delivery devices allow healthcare professionals to provide real-time results to their patients. For example, uh, when the, for example, uh, otoscope device is used, patient can view photograph of the ear canal after the health provider has examined them. What is the importance of mobile health? M-Health is important. Why? Because, uh, it makes healthcare, healthcare practices accessible to the public through mobile communication technologies in a variety of ways. For example, providing healthcare information, collecting health data, observing a patient, and etc. There are uh, some um, two, um, two categories of mobile health. Uh, the top two categories are wellness management, and the other one is disease management apps. The other categories include self-diagnosis, 
medication reminder and also electronic patient portal app. All in all, mobile health describes the use of mobile and wireless communication technologies to improve healthcare deliveries, outcome, and also research. The goals of mobile health. Mobile aims to improve care by making health information easily accessible for patients with long-term condition or chronic diseases, such as, for example, diabetes or cancer the vast majority of which are designed for patients. Another goal are develop patient-centered healthcare delivery, increase, increase self-management of illness, reduce number of hospital beds occupied, and remote monitoring and smart diagnosis, improve the disease management. What are the success factors of m -Health? And what we should consider for developing our application is the aim, uh, user, location, regulation, and content, <clears throat> sorry, platform, uh, and idea. The barriers and issues of mobile health. We can consider these issues that uh, will happen usually in, in developing such apps for example, regulation or regulatory privacy and security, integration, reliability, accessibility, acceptability, usability, confidentiality, integrity, knowledge and sharing, system flexibility, lack of teamwork, poor security, high, pr high prices, and lack of clinician involvement, poor attention to usability, and what to the these are, I think, is the complete barriers and issues that we can find in the mobile health application for also developing in the broad or global. What are the challenges of mobile health? The challenges uh, are usability, system integration, data security and privacy, network access. For example, uh, Hovan is. Um, in other, um, also the poor area, they couldn't access to network. That's why we should think for them and uh, we should use another way and, or also uh, we can provide some network for them to access uh, the mobile health application or uh, remote connection like telehealth or telemedicine. Another one is also reliability. This slide is about the assessment and evaluation of telehealth. And there are a five stage model for comprehensive research on telehealth. The first one is a concept development and that needs analysis is very important in this phase or stage. And because before developing application, we should um, use a needs uh, assessment for, from, for example, patient or physician and after that, we, we analyze our results and then we select the item, for example, which, are, uh, which is important to put it in our application. And also the second one is service design. And the third one is pre-implementation. Also the fourth is implementation and the fifth one is post implementation that uh, most of them uh, they have a lot of uh, subcategories and that is uh, about uh, the assessment or evaluation techniques for example uh, the usability test uh, in pre-implementation stage is very important we can see patients or physicians are satisfied with this app or also another tools like telehealth. And that is very necessary to know what, for example, they need more and what are their feedbacks. And that, that's why we should consider the evaluation or assessment for these uh, technologies. I mentioned one example of mobile health, and that is uh, the use for vast majority 
and the name is diabetes. The majority of MHOS disease management intervention have focused on diabetes and diabetes as a disease is associated with many complications and therefore education management and control of diabetes are very important. Also self-management aims to involve patients in their long-term care. Usually self-management, uh, we can consider it as a treatment uh, tools uh, for patients that uh, from the first uh, phase or from the first stage, patients can involve in their health care and can involve uh, to manage their health care easily. And the patients uh, living with diabetes experience difficulties associated with poor knowledge about the condition and the need to maintain uh, a strict lifestyle. Airhouse could help a diabetes patient make uh, decisions uh, for optional insulin dosing and uh, promote self-management. And this is the one screen of this application. And you can see, and there is some part, for example, glucose insulin. Also, the patient can comment, write some comments there. And the glucose has designed like time and date and the level and the insulin, also the dosage of insulin and time and dates is very, uh, are very important for them. And also about the, the meal that the patient use, we can uh, set, for example, before breakfast or also after lunch. And we can consider these two uh, in our application. Before it, uh, we, we, it's uh, very necessary to have need assessment. And also uh, the items that we can extract, uh, extract from uh, the uh, articles and from the researches that uh, before has done some uh, projects on some cancer that you wanted to uh, have a project to do project. <clears throat> That's why it's very important to have it. Another mobile application uh, are remote diagnostics, uh, SMS consultation, distance learning wellness tracking, handheld the hospital, and tracking matters, and also check up. <coughs> My article recently has published, uh, it was about the impact of mobile health and, and cancer screening, and, and it was a systematic review uh, from uh, 10 years, from uh, 2008 to 2019, we use the, some databases and we extract some uh, uh, special uh, stage and impact of uh, mobile health and cancer screening. If you're interested, you can uh, refer to this article for more information. And the third uh, section that I want to talk is about the virtual reality. <clears throat> Virtual reality has been increasingly becoming a newly evolving field of technology and has used for health and education. It has provided uh, an immersive environment that enables users to have modified experiences of reality and improve the healthcare quality. <coughs> Virtual reality devices uh, also are enabling technology that may facilitate effective communication in healthcare between and those with information and knowledge. For example, clinician specialists, experts or educator, and those seeking understanding and insight and, that, uh, and uh, for example, patient or family, non-expert or learner. Virtual reality is a technology which allows the user to interact with the computer simulated environment. Whether, for example, the environment is a simulation of real world or an imaginary world. It is the key to experiencing, feeling, and touching the past, present, and future. Uh, and um, with the virtual reality, we can experience uh, the most intimidating and grueling situation by playing safe. For example, uh, who want to uh, scare from the height, uh, they can uh, 
feel in a situation before the experience in real. And that's why we can see in the, uh, the patients can also um, much more deal with this uh, problem. And after a time, they can be treated um, by VR or virtual reality. Virtual reality is sometimes called virtual environment. Lots of scientists define VR as a simulation of the real world and also can interact with simulated objects in that environment as if they were real. Because when you put this VR, you can feel, because myself, I have and this VR, and uh, when you put on your eyes, uh, you can uh, simulate it and their imaginary world as if, for example, it's real and uh, the feeling is good when uh, you put it um, and uh, the feeling is like that you are in a uh, real environment. Virtual reality is a term used to describe a computer generated virtual environment and that may be moved through and manipulated by a user in real time. And most of the studies show the use and applications of virtual reality on treatment, <clears throat> for example, uh, psychological diseases, pain management, and brain damage, rehabilitation, disability, obesity, neurological dysfunction, and another one is skill development for healthcare provider. And another one is training. About the treatment, VR has been touted as a promising means of treating some condition, but it also may help diagnose them. As a diagnostic tool, VR potentially offers some big advantages. VR is an interactive and immersive experience and that can be used to transport patients to a place beyond the clinical setting. Using a VR headset, patients can experience realistic three-dimensional world, and also it aims to reduce the stress and anxiety of a clinic visit and teach patients new skills. About the psychology, of um, this treatment. VR is used in treatment for um, phobias, anxiety disorder, addiction, and post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. <clears throat> in VR articles, participant, uh, participants' feedback uh, was positive, and also uh, they can manage stress from environment, minimize stress related to symptoms, and such as depression and anxiety. And also a recent study has shown about the efficiency of VR that can assist uh, those who have uh, autism in dealing with their fears and phobias. The pain management uh, we, we, VR has been explored as an adjunct therapy management of acute pain among children and adults for several conditions. Use of VR in hospitalized patients significantly reduce pain, and these results indicate that the VR is an effective and safe therapy for pain management in the acute inpatient setting. Also, it can be used in the management of pain in patients with burn for daily wound care and physiotherapy. Rehabilitation. And the types of tasks used in VR are simple and low cost. And the commonest rehabilitation program of cerebral palsy involves stretching, in strengthening, and mobilization, and various other activities in, what, in VR articles, level of uh, participation, the motivation, cooperation, and satisfaction of the patient were also reported uh, to be significantly higher among the other study group uh, as compared with the uh, control group. Virtual rehabilitation approaches have been used for uh, enhancing uh, functional recovery and that may lead to increase in the risk of falling. 
as I told you about the uh, falling and the phobias and about the hate, it can be very um, useful tool. And also in conclusion, a significant improvement has been demonstrated in a balance of chronic stroke patients you know, which we are. Because uh, after stroke patient uh, has some disability and with this we are told they can recover uh, sooner than before uh, with some exercises and practices. Furthermore, we are is feasible and suitable for chronic stroke patient with balance deficit uh, in a clinical setting. Neurological disorders. We are uh, could be a key tool in treating people with neurological disorder, such as autism, schizophrenia, and also Parkinson's disease. And also, and uh, affect the lifestyle. Uh, about neurological disorders uh, that can affect the lifestyle and the uh, living conditions of the patient. And we are is the technology that may be used to simulate various types of tasks in a computerized environment. Because of some tasks that, uh, for example, developer use in developing um, uh, software for or application for VR headset, and people can deal with um, problem and with some practices and exercises, they can improve their health care. Some area of VR, the use of VR has a positive impact on health care outcome and the reduction of costs. And the users were more satisfied with using VR and to manage the health care. Uh, in comparison to users of conventional care. And also we are as a new approach has been used in treatment, training and uh, skill development uh, for the healthcare providers. Also virtual reality can give patients the ability to engage in treatment activities, improve the treatment of diseases by using less costs, uh, for example, uh, from the first time, uh, it uh, should be costly, but after the passing time, for example, after uh, some time, uh, we can see uh, because of the uh, some tool that we use, and uh, we can see the cost has decreased. And make it accessible uh, in a simulated place to receive liable and appropriate <clears throat> training techniques and also take advantages of their treatment. These are the references. Thank you so much for your attention. If you have any question, I'm here to answer to you. Thank you. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Hasna. It's really interesting to hear from Iran. So we're now open for questions. If you have questions, please feel free to enter them in the chat box. We have our okay. first two questions from Dr. Jens. So I'll be reading the first one. How do you regulate market access in Iran? And can anybody bring in an application to the market? Or is there an agency which checks the quality? Uh, if uh, you ask about the market, market because nowadays, um, because of the COVID-19 condition, usually people uh, use the virtual devices to access their physician. And that's why uh, it, it uh, leads to show the importance of digital health or mobile health for those who has some disability or patient and also but also we have some problem uh, to persuade uh, people patient or physician to use this app and because of some regulations uh, we should have some uh, privacy and confidentiality and that's why we it's in, it is necessary to put some uh, uh, for example uh, some password or some security protocol for those uh, who has who use this application. And about the COVID-19, uh, we 
in Iran uh, nowadays we have a telemedicine call center for OTVO and uh, patients uh, can ask uh, to can ask a question about psychology about the uh, condition from the nurses and they receive answer sooner than for example if for example they want to physically uh, go to the hospital and also there is a screening yes, website and that the health ministry of Iran has launched related to COVID-19 and that um, patient, uh, not patient, especially people uh, registered uh, to this website and they fill up the form and that's related to symptoms or sign up these diseases and after that uh, the nurses when uh, they see uh, for example patient or individual have uh, some problem they uh, ask them and they also call back them and to receive much more information and uh, guide them and to treat themselves especially at home Yes, uh, thank you. I don't know. Uh, it is uh, my answer was uh, enough. If you need more information, let me know. Yes, yes thank you. Uh, if you have uh, follow up questions, please feel free to type them in, uh, Dr. Jens. Uh, there's also another question from Dr. Jens. Um, he's asking who pays for the application? Is it the patient or user, the insurance, or uh, the government? Uh, it's uh, related to uh, about the application. Uh, we can, uh, if you mean uh, what are the users, uh, first uh, we should uh, set our user, our goal, uh, who is our, um, for example, our sample for developing these apps. And, uh, but because of the insurance company, we should, uh, before we should ask them or we should also, uh, about explaining this application, which is about, and so we, uh, it, it, it needs, uh, we, uh, for example, uh, mentioned or consider some parts uh, for uh, cost and uh, for um, getting money uh, from uh, patient. If, for example, um, patient physician use this application, we should um, guarantee them uh, that if, for example, use it, uh, we use uh, more, much more money uh, for you, and also we can, uh, you can have some benefits from using this app. If, for example, was it was the same, uh, it uh, they never ever accepted to use this application. Usually, uh, money is important for also government or also. Uh, about the insurance company. That's why it needs to cover some cost or some part that's related to money that is very useful. And also we should persuade them. If for example, use it, we use some more, much more money to some patient or some physician who has used this application. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hosna. Uh, we have another message from Dr. Gumindu. Uh, in many countries, even though cellular phone registration for voice communication and SMS is above 100% for the population, uh, but the broadband uh, usage is low, in Sri Lanka, it is around 30 to 40%. So in this scenario, how do you expand telemedicine primary applications like prescriptions and advanced ones like the use of VR? About the SMS, um, for example, uh, it was a uh, low income company uh, or low income uh, countries uh, that we use uh, some uh, messages to use this. Uh, so, uh, this I, I don't know, these tools to persuade them. For example, if patients has uh, some uh, disabilities, like uh, they have a far uh, far from the uh, clinical setting, then, then we should consider some uh, devices for them, and also we can uh, remote control them. And if, for example, uh, 
we are wasn't accessible for them. Uh, we should think for it and uh, we should use the, and we should uh, use it in our clinical setting. Actually, um, before um, surgery, people uh, need some uh, relaxation. That's why uh, use we are before surgery is very useful for them. But uh, the population is very important and how many people will engage. Uh, for the first time, for the first stage, it needs uh, to participate, um, I don't know, maybe uh, allow um, less than 100 people uh, to see uh, how, uh, but it depends on the uh, population. I, I said the example to see, uh, for example, what they need and uh, it's like a need assessment. And then uh, we develop this application or this um, we are designing for those people who need it. Um, but before it, uh, before, for example, asking them, uh, we, after, for example, before asking them and then develop this app or this we are, uh, we maybe we face some problem because uh, they haven't involved from the first stages. That's why it's uh, maybe uh, will uh, lead the breakdown of the company. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hosner. Uh, Professor James has a question related to that. So he's asking, how do you think can we better involve patients um, in the development of digital platforms for health? As I told you, if, for example, for, for the first stage of developing the application, uh, we involve, uh, ask if patients or physicians to involve our, our project, it's very useful because from my uh, project that we have uh, done from patient or patient and uh, with cancer, we use it, and uh, before that, uh, we use need assessment. And patient, uh, before uh, know that uh, why uh, we, uh, for example, we should use it, and what is the importance of this mobile application for us, and then all the questions we will answer after, for example, they uh, use, uh, they involve them uh, from the first stage, and when they see the app or uh, when the software they can understand it, this will be useful and they definitely use it for future, yes. Uh, thank you, Ms. Hosner. We have a few questions from our executive director, Dr. Alvin Marcelo. So the first one is, what is the mobile penetration rate in Iran and do all adults have access to at least one mobile phone? Yes, uh, yes, usually most of people use uh, mobile phones. Um, but before, because nowadays and the uh, schools are online and the government provides some uh, mobile phone for who are in poor conditions and that's why they can use it. Really. And nowadays uh, it's, everything is okay because of, uh, yeah, because of COVID-19. And most of the people has accept access to this phone. Yes, uh, thank you. The next question is: Do you have a national ID system that can uniquely identif identify every citizen, and are you allowed to use the citizen ID for healthcare purposes? And about the. Uh, yeah, because uh, usually uh, when people use uh, special uh, SIM cards, uh, yes, and they can, they should register from, uh, for example, this organization, then use it, and the information has uh, gathered, uh, the people uh, should use it for, for example, uh, connection and connection between people. Um, another question from Dr. Alvin, is there a regulatory body that checks or validates mobile health applications 
Or can anyone create the application and publish with no need for permission? Because uh, we should use uh, the special uh, code that is related to uh, the eligibility of this uh, application and also we have from the health ministry to develop it and because some of them are um, like a intervention and patients and it needs to have some special code that also related to moral and that's why it's necessary before it uh, patients but some apps um, it doesn't need for example uh, a special code but um, if for example it was an intervention from the patient we should have it uh, to develop in, especially in our country, Iran. Thank you, Ms. Hasna. Our next question is from Dr. Pradeep. Uh, so no doubt that mobile applications have a lot of potential. So uh, what is your view on the use of mobile applications when considering the rights of marginalized populations? If you ask about uh, my view <laughs> about the use of mobile application, because uh, I really interested in this field, and I know if, for example, and now we couldn't uh, run it and we could develop it in near future, most of the people uh, has a mobile phone and has a special application for treating themselves or managing their and diseases and uh, we should uh, plan for the future. And if, for example, now it wasn't access acceptable for um, patient or people or also organization, uh, we shouldn't be appointed uh, and uh, we should continue this uh, way uh, to develop much uh, more and more uh, technological and technologies related to healthcare, uh, such as software, mobile app, uh, because one time it, uh, it will be necessary, especially uh, we didn't know about the COVID-19, but nowadays you can see the importance of this application uh, that's related to uh, mobile health and also some software that uh, to manage uh, the healthcare. Also, uh, the calling center, and that we have now in Iran, uh, that is the telemedicine call center that remotely control patient this view. Thank you, Ms. Hasna. Professor James also sent another question earlier, or oh, maybe for background, could you, could you tell us a bit about your department and how many people are studying health informatics? Uh, about uh, my region, Iran. Uh, usually, uh, informatic, medical informatics is uh, for postgraduate students, and we start uh, bachelors from health information technology. Uh, then we can continue our postgraduate uh, in uh, some major or field like in medical informatics, health information technology, and also uh, another related fields uh, such as um, mobile, uh, uh, sorry, e-learning and uh, some uh, measures that's related to uh, our measures. And then uh, this is our postgraduate. And also for the um, uh, after uh, HIT or HI, uh, HMI or medical informatics, uh, we can continue our education in health information management also. Thank you, Ms. Hasna. Uh, I think that's You're the ready. last question. There's no incoming questions yet. So um, before we wrap up the session, maybe we can hear some words from our executive director, Dr. Alvin Marcelo and Professor James, who's on the call. Thank you, Cha. I'll go first before uh, we call on Professor James. Thank you, Hosna, for uh, this call and this presentation. <laughs> We learned a lot uh, from You're your experience. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, although Iran is not from Asia, we are really, really very interested um, in knowing 
uh, what are the digital health um, happenings and events going on in the other continents. Of course, everyone is welcome to join AHIN. You don't have to be from Asia. And I hope you, you can join us and also encourage some of your classmates, co-faculty, and other students to join AHIN as well. I Maybe uh, what I would not really ask you, but also maybe encourage you is to form your own health information network uh, in your part of the world. I'm sure there is one, um, but if you can also introduce us to a network in your area, that would be uh, much appreciated. Thank you very much again, uh, Hosna. And I'll pass the floor to James. James? You're very welcome. And also, I have another uh, presentation about digital health in COVID-19 in Iran, and that uh, has uh, presented in Australian Digital Health uh, Institute. Uh, that was very useful and very uh, acceptable for them. If you need more information, uh, that's very you can, good. Yes. Uh, and also yes. we uh, have another call for this uh, information. Thank you yes, so much for very your interested. invitation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much for your awesome. invitation. It's my pleasure. It was here. Hassan, uh, just to, 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 to echo Alvin um, uh, to say that I think you did a great presentation, which was really um, helpful to get a perspective of digital and, and uh, e-health from another part of the world. The, the more we work collaboratively together, not just in Asia, but more broadly internationally is of great, great interest to all of us. And your presentation gave us some insight to the work that's been going on in Iran. And uh, I'm very grateful for your time and your presentation. And again, I would echo Alvin in saying that I think um, if you would be able to encourage your um, supervisor and your faculty to um, look at AHIN's website and to, to participate in the group, I'm sure everyone would be very interested to further understand the work that's going on in a different part of the world. So again, just from me to say thank you very much for your time and your effort in your presentation today. Thank you so much for introducing me to AHIN. And it was my pleasure to see you also here. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you.